The way that I've seen most studios operate is when they're mixing down, they bounce down to a stereo file within the application, which within the DAW. Uh, it's definitely one way to do it. Uh, I've got another way that I kind of prefer to do things, uh, which brings in my hybrid method of, of sending my tracks out from the DAW out over the mixing board to work on over there, because sometimes I prefer to work on the mixing board. It's a little more intuitive when you're tracking or working quickly. This console is an old British console, which also has a nice analog tone to it, obviously, because it's an analog board. Um, it does add something by adding the sounds through those circuits and wires and the EQ of that hardware console. It does uh, alter and, I think, improve that sound. A lot of people agree with me that an analog console is a great place to sum your mixes instead of doing it all digitally in the box. Digitally in the box is not going to add or change your tone in any way. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a blending all those zeros and ones at a binary level into your final uh, your final mix or your stereo file. So it's not going to really add anything in US unless you apply a plug-in or, or something like that to it. So I like putting it out over the board and then recording that stereo mix back into the project or back into the computer. I used to mix down to a uh, uh, a reel-to-reel -reel two-track tape and then uh, after that we started using DAT machines, DAT players, and uh, that was a great digital way to uh, to mix down. And then after that, we started using CD burners and CD recorders, hard disk recorders, which were an external device. Uh, like the one up here, you see the Alasis that I've talked about. I find that I, I missed that process of running the final mix out through the board, giving it a final listen over there, and I can make little teeny adjustments over there at the mixing board if I want to, uh, and then printing that final stereo mix. So what I do is instead of assigning all of my tracks to the main mix out and then bouncing that, uh, which works fine, but it's not going to add any tone of the console. I'll send it out, all my tracks out individually or in groups. You can, you can use it as a summing board. Also send stereo groups out or a combination thereof through the mixing board. And then they're going to combine over there to that master fader on the mixing board and then send the output from the mixing board back into two tracks of my uh, DAW. And so obviously you have to route the output of the mixing board instead of to an external tape deck or recorder, you route it right back into two inputs of your analog converter. Uh, in this case, I'm using my Apollo, two of the channels of my Apollo. All I have to do is go up to my uh, DAW and create a new stereo track. Usually I'll put it way over here on, on the left hand side. Or if you open up the sequence, it's going to be on the top. And I'll show you that here. There we go. You can see my top track is, I usually call it just stereo mixes. And you arm the track to record. You can turn off the playback, the play enable. You don't want it playing back out over anything right now. You're just using this, this as a capture device. You can play it back to check it through the mixing board or another set of monitors if you like, but I usually just turn that off and arm the record track. Then you set your inputs in this case, it's my Apollo line in 7 and 8, or Apollo 7 and 8. And it doesn't really matter where your outputs are right now. Uh, and then you are pretty much ready to go. If you've got that set up in your bundles correctly, inputs on your bundles, you'll see at the bottom two additional inputs. In, in addition to my all my Motu inputs, 32 tracks from the board, I've also got two additional inputs uh, from the Apollo and it's a stereo input seven and eight. I've got them right there. And you're good to go. If you hit record, any tracks that you're playing in your DAW down below are going to obviously play out over the mixing board and whatever processing or EQ you do over there is up to you. And then it's gonna to go to the stereo master fader out of the console, back through the Apollo and into your DAW. And that's the way I prefer to mix down. It's not a bounce. You're actually listening to it back in real time, which is another good way to catch little mistakes or stuff. I'm always hearing stuff when I'm listening back on that final mix down that I say, oh, I didn't quite get that. 
uh, and that's a great way to capture the stereo file right back into the project. So it saves your mix or multiple mixes. You can uh, easily have multiple takes. You just go and add a new take and that'll give you a new take to record a second version of that song or a third, or there's no limit to how many takes you can have. So every take can be a different mix of a different uh, version of that song. You could do instrumentals, you could do stereo stems if you wanted something like that. As many different ways as you wanted to mix it from rough mixes all the way to final, they're all gonna be saved right in your project file there. Uh, coincidentally, they will also be saved as the same sample rate as your project. There's no way that you can record, at least there's no way that I know that you can record your mix back into the project at a different sampling rate, at a higher sampling rate, like 32 or something like that. Uh, there's no way you can select that per track, so it's gonna be the same as your project settings, just to, just to keep note of that, which is fine for me. I'm gonna have a 24-bit 48K stereo uh, wave file uh, is the way I save them. And um, that's, that's fine for mastering or sending out. Uh, you can even, uh, uh, when, you, when you have that file captured, you can obviously send the client that file, that WAV file, or you can export uh, MP3 if you wanted to send a compressed smaller file just for them to quickly listen to, uh, not such a big file to manage, uh, easy to email and stuff like that. Um, but that's, that's the way I like to flow these days. I record my mixes right back into the project file. I've seen a lot of stu studios doing this. Uh, they don't like bouncing. They like the sound of their expensive consoles and they like using them. And it gives you, like I said, one more chance to listen to that mix as it's going down. You can do that in a bounce too. You just do it online instead of offline. So you're going to hear it uh, online in real time as well if you're not in a hurry. That's the way. If you are just bouncing to disc, uh, consider doing an online bounce instead of just letting it swish through the whole thing and, and not, you're not hearing it that way, you're just letting the, the computer do its work. But I always like listening to that final mix as it's going down, uh, just to check for errors or any little details. Maybe the vocal was just a little louder and I wanted to bring it back. So uh, I'm constantly hitting redo on that, uh, on that uh, final mix. And then when you've got a mix uh, in your DAW, like I've got the mix down here, different versions of the same song, uh, take three and take four. The band wasn't exactly sure which one they wanted to use. So I mixed them both, save them as different names, and then you select them. You can do it in the menu up here, or you can just go down and right click on the file. Once you've selected the file, excuse me, I'll show you here. You select the file, and then you'd right click, scroll down to export selected sound bites. You see there? You can also do that over here in the sound bites window on the little mini menu. You can select, you find the file you want to work on, select it, and hit export sound bites. But you have to go through a little list to do that. I prefer just to click on the file to select it, right click, scroll down to export, export selected sound bites. It'll pop up a little menu here and it'll ask you what you want to name the file if you haven't already. Uh, and it'll ask you where you want to put it. I always just drop it on the desktop so I'm not fishing around in my computer trying to find the, the mix down. Or you could put it in the, uh, the project file. But uh, the best way to do it is just to export it to the uh, desktop, give it a name, and then down at the bottom here, you can select what type of file it's going to be. Uh, uh, most people use broadcast wave is the best, most versatile way to uh, use that. You want to do interleave. You don't want two separate mono tracks. You want an interleave stereo file. So select Broadcast Wave, Interleaved. Uh, you can also use AIFF Interleave. That's more of an Apple Macintosh sort of thing, but I would recommend doing uh, a Broadcast Wave Interleaved. And then just sit Save, and that'll save that file, that WAV file, in its uh, high fidelity 24-bit state to your desktop, where you can easily grab it, uh, drop it uh, into a folder to send off to a client or something like that. You can alternatively go down to the bottom here and instead choose, in addition to all these formats, which I never use, go down to the bottom and just hit MP3. And then you can, when you hit save, it'll export that WAV file to your desktop as an MP, a compressed little MP3 file, which is a lot easier to send around to clients for them just to, it's not a final mix, maybe you're just sending them to think they can give it a listen. Uh, and that way you can uh, send MP3 files. But if it's a final mix for a client and you want them to hear it in full fidelity of the uncompressed version, send them a 24-bit uh, wave file. 
keeping in mind that the original mix downs are stored right in the project folder. So they're gonna stay with that client file, nowhere, which is a nice thing to do. You don't have to worry about where your mixes are. They're always right in the same project folder, which I think is really nice. We used to have to keep track, in addition of the master tapes, uh, we has to, used to have to keep track of where those stereo mix downs were, like with the reel-to-reel or dats or a CDs or whatever. We had to keep track of those as well. So this is a nice where, where everything just stays right in the same project folder at the same sample rate. Brilliant, right? So that's my hybrid mixing method of uh, mixing out of the computer through the mixing console and then back into the computer and saving your mix downs right inside the computer. There is definitely a hidden advantage to doing this. Um, when I used to mix down uh, to external recorders, I frequently liked to put that stereo mix through a good quality compressor uh, or maybe an EQ just to give that final mix down uh, a little bit of compression or a little bit of EQ uh, before it went off to the mastering guy. I don't overdo that because the master, I would like to give the mastering guy a lot of wiggle room there, but a little light compression on the way out, especially through a good quality compressor, is nice if you don't overdo it. Um, it's really nice here because as it's coming back from the console into the inputs of the Apollo unit through uh, line in seven and eight, uh, you can scroll over here. These are my four Apollo uh, Unison preamps that I use. In addition to the Universal Audio 610, I've got that coming back in through a mono input on channel five, leaving channel six on the Apollo free uh, for another device as I add another device. And then over here, seven and eight, I've got those linked together as a stereo input. Those are two mono inputs, seven and eight. And that's my input for my console. I've, I've labeled that the Angela outputs. That's the name of my console is Angela. And it'll come back in here uh, to be recorded back into the project. You have these insert slots for Apollo uh, plugins. You can't put any plugins on there, but you can put any of your Apollo plugins on that insert. And what that means is that you can attach or apply uh, whatever type of Apollo device you want to that incoming signal from your console. And what I've decided to do is use that, and there are four slots. I think you can assign more slots, but I, I four is plenty for me. Uh, and you can have any of your favorite compressors or EQs as an input device being attached or strapped to that final mix down. Uh, so in my case here, I use my Manly Stereo Variable MU Limiter Compressor which is a very high quality compressor, uh, un unaffordable to me as a hardware unit, but the plugin is very affordable and I bought it as a collection. I love it as a stereo bus compressor. And this is gonna be just a light little teeny bit of uh, compression on my, mi my mix down uh, and it's baked into the cake. So don't overdo it. Just uh, taking off uh, maybe two decibels, just your needle is just fluttering a little bit just to glue that mixed together, it's a really nice way to get a, uh, a final tone. Uh, you're not stuck with uh, the Manly though, you can bypass the Manly. Here, let me just show you really quickly the other devices I use. Uh, here's a Fairchild 670. This is a classic old, very early Beatles-esque compressor. Uh, really nice as a mix down bus. It's a very subtle, warm sounding, silky, tone, even not using any compression, just running it through the circuits is going to make, add a nice little sheen to this mix. But I, you know, adding a few decibels of compression, two or three is really nice here. I've also got my trusty API 2500 compressor, which is a great bus compressor. If you want something like that, you're, I can pull that up. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to add a little bit of compression to your mix down. For my Manly collection, I've got the Manly Massive Passive EQ. So if you wanted to, you could attach, and this is something I typically do, you could have the Manly Massive Passive and the Variable MU, which is a very nice combination as we've discussed, as your final mix bus solution. Uh, you probably wanna put the compressor before the EQ. That's the way to do that. You could flip that around if you want, but I prefer this way. So you're compressing and then EQing the final mix instead of EQing into the compressor. And then a little teeny bit, a light little bit of stereo compression on that master mix, and then applying a little bit of EQ 
maybe brightening up the top end just a, a skosh or adding a little more bottom and punch to the bottom end or you could alter your middle if you wanted to bring out the snare or the vocal or guitar. You can actually kind of do that here with your Manly Massive Passive. That's really a great uh, EQ for your master bus and your final, final EQ. But remember, it's baked into cake. You can't really undo it like you could if you were doing a bounce. So keep that in mind. That's my go-to combination right there. I've got the other compressors as options, the Fairchild and the API. Uh, you could use other compressors or EQs as you, as you wish, but I chose to use my two Manleys. That's an added advantage of mixing back into the project through your console. Another nice thing you can do with this method uh, is creating stereo stems. If this was going off to a project where they needed a little bit of control over the final mixes, say a film project or an advertisement, a TV show or something like that, sometimes those producers or those stations will ask for stereo stems uh, so that they can reconstruct the uh, song a little bit without going back to a complete remix. So if you need to export stems, this is a good way to do that too uh, over the mixing console, uh, just mixing, mixing them back into your project folder. So if you needed uh, just the percussion or just the strings or just the vocals, you just mute everything else and let a pass go by uh, with recording that back in uh, and you can save those, label them carefully and save those as stereo stems. Make sure you start at the same point every time preferably the beginning of the song or the project uh, so that, or put a marker so it always starts at the same time. Otherwise they won't line up and you'll be getting a call from that producer. Okay, so I don't wanna, wanna put you in that kind of hot water. When I'm mixing out of the box and putting my tracks back over the console, for mix downs, I like to put things in stereo groups uh, so that I've got all of my drums all of my keys, all of my guitars, all of my vocals, uh, horns, strings, percussion. I like to put them in different, in different stereo groups so that I'm able to easily recall them later. That is, if, if somebody's coming back to remix something, I can push all the faders right back to their stereo settings at Unity Gain and put my pans all the way out left and right for stereo mixes. That way I've got one, two, three, four, five or six different stereo stems or subgroups of all my different instruments. So it's easy to come back and later and, re, and rebalance or remix a song. I turn my EQ off. I don't have any kind of uh, outboard gear or processing or reverbs or anything like that. I've just got, I'm just using the console as a summing mixer. Uh, that way, uh, it's very easy to recall mixes. Uh, if you start doing EQ and stuff like on, on your, your final, uh, you're going to have to write those settings down in case somebody wants to come in back and redo that. I prefer to do it in the DAW because those are stored with the session. That way, every time you pop your project open in the session, everything's going to be coming back out over the board in the same way. So you're really just using the console to add a little bit of analog tone or character to your final subs, and then putting that final stereo mix out right there, and that'll go right back into your DAW. Alternatively, you could have the, you don't have to have everything all split down into subgroups. You could just have the main left, right come out of your console, come out of your DAW, and have it go to two tracks of your console, left and right. Pan those out hard left and right, and then you've got uh, the tone of the circuitry and the console uh, added to your stereo mix. You could also engage the EQ if you wanted to and add a little bit of analog EQ to that final mix. That's something I've done if I'm, I've got a stereo mix. It's more of a mastering thing than a mixing thing, but you can use that, that board's nice analog EQ, which I love in these old British consoles and add a little bit of uh, high end or a little bit more bottom end, if you're a little bit lacking in the bottom end, you can boom it, boom it up right there, select your frequencies, and kind of do things old school like that. So how you select your subgroups is up to you. You can do just a stereo output, or you could have all your, all your instrumental mix right there, and then have your vocals, on another, you know, something like that. It's up to you, and it also ups, up to the client. Find out what your client's needs are, especially if you're doing something for film or television, find out if they're gonna want stams and subs because that's gonna be part of your job and you wanna do it right the first time.